Hi everyone, my name is Jess. I am a facilitator at UVPL McCullough, and this is my first program. It is called Foraging for Your Home. Um, some of you may not know what foraging is, but it's where you go out and you go on nature walks or you're hiking or really you're just out and about in your neighborhood or in your yard or on your property and you collect things that you can use um, for around the house. So this week I am making rustic holiday garland. I have gathered together some sticks and some greenery swag from pine trees in my neighborhood, pine cones from a hike out in Illinois, um, cut down some sticks because I'm going to make some of these primitive little stars that you can string on nine feet worth of twine. Um, I've also got some wooden beads here just because they're kind of natural and woodland-esque. And then I went ahead and I dried some fruit. This is something really easy to do. You can do it at home with any oven. Basically, you just slice apples and oranges to about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch thick, put them in the oven at 200 degrees and let them just slowly dehydrate for about two hours. So they come out really, really beautiful and they smell good too. So it's kind of a plus plus. Um, but yeah, I've also got tools here to make tassels and just kind of putting it all together. So it'll be something pretty that I can just hang around at my house. I can go ahead and just string some oranges and apples, and I don't really have any pattern that I like to do. I just like to kind of string them on through. I think it's really organic and pretty and just kind of wholesome and earthy. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I am using um, just like a regular jute twine that you can find at the store, rather inexpensive. Um, I'll probably just twist it and tie it on so it can be a little bit more secure every now and then, but nothing, nothing too patterned, nothing too difficult. Um, I'm kind of an asymmetrical person. Um, I love, love things all over the place. Eclectic, I guess you could say is my nature. So just kind of stringing them along, seeing how they look. One of the problems with such a long strand of twine is you have to just pick where you wanna go ahead and string everything. Um, worst case scenario, you can just attach little bits of twine or yarn to whatever it is you're stringing up and go from there. Um, that way when you're getting caught and twisted, you can kind of avoid that. Yeah, so, so far, so good. I'll show you how to make this star here in a minute. But yeah, it's just something really fun and pretty that you can just kind of have, have around the house. It should last through um, the holiday. The swags might get a little dry and a little, um, yeah, I guess dry and they might shed a little bit. But again, it's, it's natural. You're making it with nature. You're kind of at the mercy of of what you've got um, to choose from. So I, again, I think it's really pretty, um, just a nice little organic kind of style to decorating for the holidays. Yeah, again, just kind of pretty little decoration. So what I'm going to do now is I'll keep stringing those along. Um, actually, I think now is probably a good place for a pine cone. So just grab a pine cone. I just kind of twist it in there because these pine cones are pretty hardy. Um, don't need to be beautiful, but you can just kind of get them shoved in, get the twine kind of shoved in between like the little cones. So, yeah, so we, here we are. Got four, five things on here and it's already looking like nature. So um, I'll just keep working on this and I'll show you what it looks like in the end. Let's go ahead and try and get this 
star made. It's pretty easy. Like I said, I went ahead and found some sticks in my neighborhood and just cut them down to about four inches long. And then you just basically draw a star with sticks and let the glue set before you add the next um, branch. Because if you don't, it will just break. I don't know if you can see exactly what I'm doing, but I'm just dotting with glue wherever I can. And holding it down until it's dry. Now I saw a tutorial too where once it's all dry it's kind of nice to just tie twine or raffia around those corners and makes it a little bit prettier and a little bit more polished but like I said I'm I like it kind of messy so that's what I'm going with. Another good idea is, especially with the pine cones, you can paint them white or get, get glue all over them and dip them in glitter if you want to make it a little bit fancier garland, maybe not so rustic. You want to add a little, little glam. I understand that. Um, that's always a good idea too. But I don't know if you can see, I've just been going around in the corners and just making this little star. Um, and it's just going to be a nice little ornament. And again, like this is all stuff that I was able to find out on my walks. My neighbors who have pine trees, they were gracious enough to let me take some of them. Um, also, a good thing to think of when you get your Christmas or your holiday tree this winter, just when they go to cut down um, the branches at the bottom, just see if you can keep them. I did that last year, and the guy at the Christmas tree place just let me go home with a ton of swag. So that was really nice. Um, but there's definitely opportunities out there every day probably on your property or in your walks, on your walks that you can find some of these things and just try and make them work for you, work for your decor, work for the season. So yeah, again, it's just very basic, but it's got a nice touch. So I think I will add some more oranges and apples. Um, You are dealing with nature, so don't be surprised if there's some bugs or some dirt in the branches. It is what it is. Um, you have a place outside that you can work on it. It might be better for cleanup purposes, but I'm really liking these stick stars. I also saw that you can make them into snowflakes. You can make... Um, Christmas trees out of them. There's a bunch of different things you can do. So that's also a fun idea if you just want to get creative with what you're working with. And for the citrus drying in the oven, don't be afraid to dry any citrus. I, I really like to do um, grapefruit. I haven't tried limes or lemons yet, but I know that's a good option as well. Um, what else? Limes, lemons, grapefruit, the blood oranges are really pretty after you dehydrate them and they smell really good. And you, once you're done with your garland, you can even just reuse it as potpourri. So it's just kind of a fun thing to have around the house. These ones, these apples, they were coated with cinnamon before they were baked in the oven. So they smell extra delicious. The only thing you might have a problem with is getting the twine through some of the fruit. You might need to punch punch a bigger hole or 
get creative that way. But again, this is supposed to be fun. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think a standard length of garlands around nine feet. So that's what I'm making right now. And then, like I said, you can kind of add to it if you want. If it gets closer to the holidays and you want to maybe add some more fruit to it or add some tassels, I, you can do that. I've made some yarn tassels that I might add to this just to kind of make it a little softer, maybe not so rugged. But. Yeah, it's really pretty and it's fun. Um, so we're already probably about halfway done. It's only taken me a few minutes really. But yeah, now we've got several different things happening here. It's not exactly the most perfect thing, but when you drape it around your window or in your kitchen, it gives off a nice nice smell and it's pretty to look at so thank you for watching and again like anytime you're out in nature just enjoying yourself it's kind of a good idea to maybe look around and see if you can't use anything that's already out there that might help help you beautify your home and just honestly just feel good like it feels good to be to bring the nature indoors mm -hmm.